This is the answer key for types of bonds worksheet. When we look at this worksheet, we need to know a few things. Um, bond type on the top part here, we need to look at what's happening to the electrons. And so we need to think of some small phrases. And all this information from this table is going to come from our, uh, our uh, excuse me, um, it's going to come from our notes that we took in class. So uh, bond type based on electrons here. Uh, we need to know that ionic bonds transfer electrons, where one atom gains electrons and the other one loses electrons. Covalent are going to be shared electrons. And then metallic, we learned as C of electrons. For types of atoms, we're looking at metal versus non-metal. So you have to recall for this definition of bonding, we have a basic periodic table. Metals live on the left-hand side, and nonmetals live on the right-hand side, except for that one hydrogen that's actually a nonmetal. So types of atoms, this is going to be a metal to a nonmetal in that order. This will be a nonmetal to another nonmetal. Metallic will be a metal to a metal. So then compound characteristics, we had three basic groupings here. We had conductivity, solubility, and then also melting point. So um, ionic conductivity in a solid is poor. And again, this is coming off of the notes that we took in class. But solution, S-O-L-N, is the abbreviation for solution. Conductivity is good. Skipping down to covalent, solid and solution conductivity is poor. And then finally, for metallic, solid is good. But then uh, solution conductivity is poor. This is our best set of measurements or set of observations we can take because these are very black and white, either poor good, poor poor, good poor, which is very useful for determining the bond type. As far as solubility goes, um, we're going to talk about both uh, Polar, so it dissolves in water, would be a great example of a polar uh, liquid. Or nonpolar, can it dissolve in nonpolar liquid. This would be something like mineral oil. When we are talking about that, so for ionic, polar equals good. And if you're going to be soluble in one, you're really not going to be very soluble in the other. We'll call it NP is poor. Covalent depends. Um, if you are a network covalent substance, you're not going to be soluble in either. And that's like glass or diamond, where the bonds won't break into any smaller pieces at all once it's in a liquid. So this is variable. So polar is going to vary, and nonpolar will also vary. Now, if you happen to be a molecular covalent substance, if you dissolve in polar, you won't dissolve in nonpolar, and vice versa. If you dissolve in nonpolar, you won't dissolve very well in polar. Metallic, um, both polar and nonpolar, equal poor. You're not going to dissolve at all. So, kind of useful, but the fact that these vary, eh, that takes away some of the usefulness. Lastly, is going to be melting point. So, melting point for these tends to be very high. Melting point for covalent can range from very low to uh, very high. 
And then most metals tend to be high. The ones that we can get in metallic form easily tend to be pretty high because they're not very reactive. They're not as reactive. Going through based on atom type, we're going to look at is sodium and then chlorine a metal or a non-metal. So we'll figure out what we have based on the two atoms that are present. Sodium is a metal, chlorine is a non-metal. That makes us ionic. Two nitrogens, two non-metals are going to be covalent. Nitrogen and oxygen, two non-metals, covalent. Silver is a metal, so that will be metallic bond. And then water is a non-metal, remembering that hydrogen is a non-metal, so that makes us covalent. And again, we're going back up to this picture up at the top of the page, a metal to a non-metal. Do you live left of the stairs or right of the stairs? Based on atom type, <clears throat> So, sodium um, is a metal, fluorine is a non-metal, so that's ionic. Two metals, metallic. Uh, non-metal, non-metal, that's covalent. Metal, non-metal, that's ionic. And lastly, carbon and fluorine are both non-metals, so that makes this covalent. Now, based on the electronegativity, we really don't do the ones that were metallic. Those don't come into play here. But we need a resource to do that. And... One resource that we have available to us in class is the periodic table. It looks something like this. And on the periodic table, on the bottom, at least on this one, are the electronegativity negativity values. So these bottom numbers here. I'll write those in while I'm doing this. But we're going to round to the tenth. So uh, for this top problem, sodium on the table is 0.93. I'm going to say it's 0.9. And then chlorine is uh, 3.16, so 3.2. 3.2 minus 0.9 um, would be one, uh, 2.3. And that would make this ionic. And we're recalling, hopefully, that less than um, 0.3 is going to be non-polar covalent. 0 0.3 to 1.7 will be polar covalent. And then greater than 1.7 will be ionic. Two nitrogens, so it doesn't really matter what their values are because if we subtract them, 3 minus 3, 3.04 rounds to 3, will be non-polar covalent. A nitrogen to an oxygen, so we just did nitrogen, which was 3. Oxygen rounds to 3.4, so that gives us a 0 0.4, which is a just slightly polar covalent. Hydrogen is 2.2. Oxygen, we just did, as 3.4, so that gives us 1.2 which falls into, that's a pretty polar covalent. On the right-hand side, we've already done sodium once over here. So we have a 0.9, and fluorine, 3.98 rounds to 4, so this is 3.1, very ionic. Carbon to oxygen, carbon's listed as 2.55, so 2.6. Oxygen is 3.4, gives us 0.8 which is polar covalent. Sodium, we've done a number of times, 0.9. And sulfur, our table says it's 2.6. So that's 1.7. That's right on the boundary. It's the very top edge of being polar covalent, but not quite ionic. So it's very close to being ionic, which means it's got a lot of ionic character. And then carbon, we've just done up here, 2.6. Fluorine, we've done is 4. That's a 1.4 difference, which makes this polar covalent. The last question says, if we were given an unknown powder, how might you identify what type of compound it is? Explain what you might do to, to determine if the unknown compound is ionic, covalent, or metallic. Consider properties such as melting point, solubility in water, and the conduction of heat or electricity. How could you use these properties to identify your unknown compound? So we said earlier that the top property, top characteristic conductivity is the most important. So 
we would want to say determine the conductivity of the unknown in both solid and solution format. If conductive as a solid, it's going to be metallic. If conductive in solution, that'll be ionic. And lastly, if a non-conductor, that would be covalent. Finally, um, the other properties should also match up. Or further support the identification. <clears throat> and there we are.